Dialog API Improvements This tutorial applies to PHP Runner, ASP Runner .net, and ASP Runner Pro version 10.5 or later. The Dialog API was added starting with version 10.3. A tutorial entitled Introduction to Dialog API is still applicable and I suggest you watch this tutorial if you have not done so already. Since the introduction, some significant improvements have been added to the API. The Dialog API displays a dialog to the user and sends user-provided data to the server event. This function is best suited for the client before section of the custom button event or an AJAX code snippet. Exactly like demonstrated in the introduction tutorial, Always return false when using the Dialog API. Control.Dialog always returns false upon call and can be used to set the return value. There are a few extra parameters which I will explain in this tutorial. Also, we now have a much wider variety of field types to choose from. An array of input controls are available to use in before OK, before cancel and after create functions. OK, here I have a list of orders and I'm going to add a custom button to the grid to capture payment information. For those of you who are new to PHP Runner, at the page designer, the list page, switch to advanced grid. I split the column and add a custom button and call it Add Payments. I format the button and go to the event code. The syntax did not change. I copy paste from the manual to the client before event of the custom button. For demonstration purposes, I will again spread everything out so we can see the structure better. First, I add title, header and bottom. The fields are next. We will come back to this section shortly. And now I rename the OK button to update and the cancel button stays cancel. The first field is of type text. Note the other values name which will be used to refer to in the server event, label that will display in the dialog, type is the field type you would like to create, required is set to true to make the field compulsory and the default value for the field. These are more or less the basics for each field. You do not need to set all of these for each field as you will see in a moment. There are nine different field types and I'm going to add them all for the purpose of this tutorial. The structure for each field is more or less the same except for type of course. In the case of date and date text you can also set a date picker to true. In case you do not need a field to be compulsory simply remove the value. Next are checkbox and lookup type fields. We need to specify the list of options in both these field types. Here at one of the examples we can see how it works. Back at the project I add a comma and declare two more fields. It is very similar to any other field except for the option parameter. I also removed the value parameter. Finally, 
I'm now going to add a checkbox field. Okay, let's build and upload. Refresh the page. And for some reason, nothing happens. I'm using Google Chrome. The quickest way to see what is going on is to right click on the page, select inspect and click on console. I have an error, time is not defined. I was playing with the current time just before this recording so I think I know exactly what is going on. Back at the project, here at the checkbox field, required must be true and not time. Trust me, mistakes do happen. Okay, let's try again. We can close the console, refresh the page, and this time the dialog opens. Everything looks good to me. I might want to auto-populate the current time over here. We can select the payment type. Radio buttons are working. OK, all good. Cancel. Back at the project, I perform some JavaScript code to store the current time in a variable. I now set the value of the time field. Build and upload, and now the capture time has a default value. Last but not least, I'm going to implement before OK, before cancel, and after create functions. After create is a function that executes directly after the dialog is created. Before cancel is a function that executes directly before the normal cancel code. And before OK executes directly before the normal OK button code. Back at the project, I add a comma after a cancel indicating a new parameter and add the after create function. You can run any valid JavaScript code here. The example in the manual calls a sweet alert function and I will do the same. This is just a message to the user to be accurate when capturing the data. I build and upload the files, refresh the page, and directly after the dialog is created, the sweet alert pop-ups appears. OK, I'm now going to add before OK and before cancel too. But before I do, right in the beginning of this tutorial, I mentioned that you can call the dialog API from any other JavaScript event too. The JavaScript event you are calling the dialog from might not have client before and server events like a custom button. So it makes sense to use the before OK function to code the actions when the user clicks OK. Exactly how to do this is beyond the scope of this tutorial. I'm only going to add two more sweet alert pop-ups. One on the OK button and one on the cancel button. Back at the client before event, I now add the two functions. Note the control dot value embedded in the message. Each control on the dialog has an ID. From top to bottom, starting at zero. In other words, zero is the first, one is the second control, etc. I want to display the payment code, which is the first control in the dialog, so I will change the ID to zero. OK, let's build and upload. Again, we get the first alert. I click cancel and the operation cancelled message appears. Again, this time I fill out the form. Click OK and payment information was updated, right? Wrong. 
all the field data is going to the server event after the user clicks the OK button. Each field can be identified via its name. At the server event, $Palms field name will carry the user entered value. The server event is PHP and it is here where you can either insert or update a database table. Please refer to the introduction to Dialog API tutorial where I have a good example of how to do this using the database API. The client after event can be used to refresh the page or you can just leave it blank. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Please comment, like and subscribe. Till next time.